no point of the Simmons to invite us to another one of their parties, don't you think, dear? Well, oh, that it is, Hazel. I just hope they invested in some entertainment this time. That last one nearly put me to sleep. Great to see you again, Rick. It's a pleasure to see you, Mark. The pleasure's all mine, Rex. Care for a drink? I'm fine. What's all the commotion over here? Oh, I see you found the parlor hypnotist I met at the bar earlier today. I offered him a place to stay in exchange for his entertainment. You don't actually believe in all this hypnosis, Mumbo Jumbo, do you? Of course not. He's just here for the more daft guests and things. Well, will be close-minded of me not to see what all the fuss is about. All right, my dear. I want you to watch the watch. Feel your eyelids getting heavier as you drift deeper and deeper into a state of total and complete relaxation. I want you to imagine yourself as an eight-year-old. Can you tell me your name? Lydia. You don't actually expect us to believe any of this nonsense, do you? Now, Lydia, I'm going to give you a piece of paper, and I want you to write your name for me. Hmm. Now, Lydia, I want you to imagine yourself at five years old. Can you write now? A little bit. Do you think you could write your name for me? Yes, but I don't write my L's so good. Lydia, is that the hand you always write with? Yes, but teacher wants me to change. Okay, Lydia, on the count of three, I want you to come back to this place and this time. One, two, three. How are you feeling? Well, better than a hot bath and massage any day. That was amazing. Quite the act you pushed up there. I don't suppose you would mind performing it on me, would you? By all means, take a seat. Ready? Excuse me. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Bernstein, I want you to follow the watch with your eyes. You feel yourself drifting into a state of deep, deep relaxation. Now, I want you to imagine... Gotcha! You didn't think I was simple enough to fall for such a mind trick as hypnosis, did you? Hypnosis only works on those with modest inhibitions. I've associated with strung up people like you before, and the result's always the same in the end. I think it's about time I retire. I see something in you, Mr. Bernstein. Is that so? Yes, and I think if you open your eyes, you would see it too. Dear, I think there may be more to this hypnosis thing than I gave credit for. Go to bed, Maury. Don't you know what hour it is? No. I've read books by Mesmer, Charcot, and even Sigmund Freud discussing the therapeutic benefits of hypnosis. I can't sleep now. Hush, will you? I have a migraine that can sink the Titanic. Okay. Actually, would you mind if I tried something on you? What now, Maury? Well, I may be able to alleviate your migraine with the powers of hypnosis. If you let me try. At this point, I would try just about anything. Right. 
And I want you to stare at this watch. As I swing it back and forth, you are becoming sleepy. Very sleepy and very relaxed and relaxed and something else. All of your pain and headache flying away like butterflies. All the stresses that were burdening you before are disappearing. When you wake up, you're going to feel healthy and rested. One, two, three. Lori, what did you do? I feel great. I only encourage wishful thinking in your subconscious mind. Do you remember anything? Last thing I remember, you were telling me to relax. Then, next thing I know, my migraine was gone, and I feel rejuvenated. Wow, did you do that with hypnosis? Stand up. I have one more thing I'd like to try. Now that I helped Hazel feel better, I might as well have a little fun with my newly learned ability. This time, when I hypnotized her, I told her that her arm was a steel bar, and she couldn't move it until I told her so. And for the rest of the night, her arm was as still and stable as a steel bar. I even went back to my reading just to pass the time, only to make sure that my hypnosis attempt achieved long-lasting results. I had to be sure. steel bar. In three, two, one, you're waking up healthy and relaxed. Healthy and relaxed and you feel no pain whatsoever. Your arm is no longer a steel bar. Hazel! Oh, thank God. Is it morning already? You know, this hypnotism is much more substantial than I imagined. The results last night confirmed all my beliefs. I can't believe what I'm hearing. Maury, it's like you're a changed man. Do you plan to do more testing? Yes, of course. I'm just looking for a new subject. Why not keep testing on Hazel? Is she not doing it for you anymore? It's, it's not, not that. that. It's just that every time he tries to hypnotize me, I stare off into space and my mind goes blank. I'll do it. Are you sure, honey? Well, I've never been hypnotized before. Come on, Rex, let me have a little fun. Well... I don't see any harm in it. Okay, Ruth. I'm going to swing this medallion back and forth, and I want you to watch it. Okay. Just pay close attention to it, follow it with your eyes. Now, as I swing this back and forth, you feel yourself drifting into a state of deep and complete relaxation. You're drifting off now, getting sleepy and sleepy. Okay. I want you to think back as far as you can go in your memory. As far as you can possibly go. Now tell me, how old are you? I'm this morning. Do you go to school? Yes. Do you know the name of anyone in particular in your class? Donna. Nobody else really talks to me. Okay, very good, Ruth. Now I want you to fast forward in your life to a very significant time where you were either really happy or just something that left an impression on you. I just graduated. I I'm about to be married. Oh yeah? To Rex? No, to Donald, silly. Donald, whatever happened to Donald? He was surfing in the Great War. He promised me he would write to me every day. And he did, for the first couple of months. But then, one day, the letters, they stopped. I went to the mailbox, and I prayed that one day, they would be there. Ruth, that's such a pity. 
I wish I didn't have to find out under these circumstances. Can't hear you, darling. She's under a very deep state of hypnosis. She never wanted to burden anyone with her sorrows. She never told me she was married before. I suppose you two will have a lot to talk about after this. While we're on the subject of delaying the inevitable, there's one more thing I'd like to try. What would that be, Maury? I was reading the works of Edgar Cayce last night. I came across an interesting theory. Rex? Hazel? What if you could take someone back to before they were born? You're not talking about some kind of past life, are you? Precisely. You know, I may be an amateur hypnotist, but I have Truman's confidence. In that case, go ahead, Mort. Okay, Ruth. Now, I want you to drift far, far away into the deepest recesses of your subconscious. Now that you're there, I want you to go farther. Go farther than you ever knew you were capable of going before. And break through and go even farther than that. Now, tell me, what's your name? Friday. What did you say? Bridie. Bridie Murphy. Do you know what year it is? 18... 1806. How old are you, Bridie? I'm eight. Has anything significant happened to you this year? I broke the picture of my brother Duncan. Why did you do that? My brother got sick, so I... I took the picture of uh, him off the wall and so I wouldn't have to look at him. My mom gave me a spanking after that. Did they tell you what happened to Duncan? They said, they said he caught the, the black something. None, none of the medicine had helped. Uh, he was just a baby. Maury, that's enough. Okay. You're waking up healthy and rested as Ruth Simmons in three. Two, one. Ruth, are you feeling all right? Never better, dear. I've never had my mind this clear before. Well, me and the wife should be going. It's getting late. But you just got here. The case of Bridie Murphy. Bridie Murphy, Bridie Murphy. All I ever hear anymore is Bridie Murphy. She's over a century old, darling. It's not like I'm in love with her or something. She is another woman, Maury. I don't care how old she is. You've changed ever since you discovered hypnosis. I'm on the brink of a scientific discovery that will change how we view the human subconscious. There's just simply no time for jealousy right now. Hazel, would you like to join me tonight at the Simmons? I've been making some calls to some influential people, and if I can bring Bridie back one more time, we're going to be set for life. Maury, if you hypnotize Bruce again, I will have no part in it. I can picture it now. I, Maury Bernstein, professional hypnotist, pull up in my brand new Cadillac, to my luxury mansion, where I'm greeted by my beautiful wife at the pool. How does that sound? I can't stop you from continuing down this path, but I won't watch you turn to Sigmund Floyd. One day, Hazel, you will see that I'm doing this. I'm doing this for us. No, Maury, we're doing it for you. Why didn't you tell me about Donald? It's not something a girl likes to talk about, losing a loved one. I almost wish I hadn't let Maury hypnotize me in the first place. Good afternoon, Rex. Speak of the devil, I was wondering if you'd like to have dinner this evening with the wives. Um, sure. Just no hypnosis this time. Let's just have fun like we used to. Of course not. I have no foul intentions in mind. Ah, oh, Maury. And you brought a friend. Where's Hazel? She couldn't make it. This is Ivan. He's a professor at the local university and also an established writer. 
Who wants to publish a piece on Bridie Murphy? Who is Bridie Murphy? You haven't told her? Told me what? Dinner's canceled. Thanks for coming, guys. Not so fast. I have the answer to all your questions right here. Maury, you're treading on thin ice. You don't want to know what happens when you break through. Dr. Simmons, please. This could change hypnotism, psychology, and most importantly, science. The world needs to know about Bridie Murphy. I demand to know what I said when I was hypnotized. Okay, Maury, but this is the last time you use my wife as your guinea pig. Okay, Ruth. I want you to stare at this. And as I swing it back and forth, feel yourself becoming sleepier and sleepier, falling into a deep state of relaxation. Drifting off now. Now, I want you to go where I had you go last time, to a place deep beyond the recesses of your subconscious. Friday, are you in there? Of course. It's good to see you, Friday. I was going to ask you what the best day of your life was and to tell me about it. I married young to start a life of my own with Scotty. And when was this wedding? 1813. So you and Scotty, were there any places that you guys liked to go? To dance or to dine perhaps? No, not really. We danced at our wedding. That was the happiest day of my life. Um, was there a particular dance that you liked to do? A jig, of course. Would you mind showing me? I'd very much like to see it. It's such a lovely dance. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Oh, wow. Very good, Bridie. Very good. Thank you. Okay, Bridie. Next, I'd like to ask you a personal question. Can you recall how you died? I was coming out of the loo, and I walked towards the steps as usual. And I... I... It's okay. Go on, Bridie. Tell me, what happened next? I just remember the flickering of the candle at the bottom of the stairs. I could see my whole body just lying there so cold and lifeless. There there was some some sort of a space, a dimension. I, I was just ready to rest. You said you could look down at, on your body as an outside observer in this shift of consciousness you described. Where did you go? What did you become? The, the darkness. It's, it's, it's everywhere. Maury, I, I don't like this. It, Dr. Simmons, we must push forward. This is my wife you're talking about. You have no idea what long-term psychological effects this will have on her. There was no one to touch, and I was very lonely. I had to, at times, remind myself who I am. Who are you? I'm Moya Bernstein, amateur hypnotist, and I'm your friend. Call me. It's Friday. Where are you? What dimension? Somewhere foggy, where I could see the energy I cut into while I was alive. But there's no point in seeing it if I can't do anything with it. That's why I left, and I came here. So you chose to be reincarnated? How, Bridie? How? I don't know how it works exactly. It was so hard leaving Scotty behind. But this is the only world I know. I had to come back. Even if it made someone else have to trade me places. Damn it, Maury, wake her now. Okay, Ruth, on the count of three, you're waking up healthy and resting. One, two. <laughs> Damn it, Ruth! On the count of three, you're waking up, rested, and relaxed. Three, two. <laughs> You'll take the low road, I'll take the high road. <laughs> Maury, it's not working. Get her out of this. You did this to her. Bridie, you don't belong here. I command you to leave and never come back. Ruth! Run without me! Bring her back, Maury! Bridie! Bridie! 
Alrighty. This is crazy. You have to get out of the road before it's too late. I'm not moving, Maury. I've moved enough. I'm here to stay. You can't stay here. You had your chance to live. You can't take away roots. This isn't my first life, and as sure as hell isn't going to be my last. Righty! This isn't a movie! Get out of the road! Stop it, Maury! You're not the director anymore! You can't control everything! Let go! One, two, three. Gotcha! I was simple enough to fall for such a mind trick as hypnosis, did you? 